So as you can see, everyone's really excited to have you here tonight. Tell, tell us how you became Christians. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting us to the church and uh, giving us this great opportunity to share our story. Uh, it's really an honor and blessing to be here. And uh, we heard that many of you, most of you were praying for us and supporting us when we were in prison. And it's uh, really an honor to uh, meet you in uh, person and thank you. We really appreciate for your support. Actually, it's uh, almost 15 years that uh, I converted to uh, Christianity and um, from my childhood, I always loved God and um, uh, I did many researches about him, but uh, because I was born into a Muslim family, Muslim country, um, and the Sharia law couldn't answer to uh, my questions. And uh, I had many questions, and uh, because the image that um, Islam gives uh, Muslims, it's uh, about God, is the one who rules over the human race and punish them for the slightest sins. And in Islam, it's, more, uh, it's all about the punishment. And I had many questions, for example, uh, why I had to speak uh, to my God in Arabic instead of my native language, Farsi. Doesn't this God cannot understand my mother tongue? <laughs> Why should I pray to him as if he is a great leader or ruler over me? And I had many questions like this, and uh, I was asking in my school everywhere, but I couldn't get uh, a right answer. And, uh, but despite all these reservations and all these questions, I still did my best to follow my religious duties because I thought uh, I may be wrong, and the truth will show itself to me one day in the future through Islamic rules. And that's why I prayed namaz for two years without fail. I used to read Quran, but I can say this type of prayer and worshiping were not making me uh, feel any closer to my God. On the contrary, they were distancing me further from him as they had become a routine action that I was forced to do, not I wanted to do. And for the first time, I was around 17 that God spoke to me through one of my uh, dream. In that dream, uh, God revealed uh, the real face of Muslim and Islam to me, and also he, re he revealed uh, his true love to me through white horse. Um, unfortunately, I can't uh, share all the details. You can read in the book uh, because of the time. Um, after that dream, I decided to uh, put aside my religion duties and came to the conclusion that the most important part of being a believer is just my heart. Then I began to speak to my God in the way of a relationship between a father and a child by my language, Farsi. And one day I heard uh, from one of my friends about uh, Jesus, that Jesus is the son of God who has come to this earth for freedom from uh, their sins. For the first time when I heard about Jesus, I became very curious because I hadn't heard anything like that about Jesus. I used to think he was also another prophet as he had been introduced to us in our textbooks at school. So I told myself, how do I know Jesus is the truth? Maybe I need to do some research about other religions. And I started doing uh, research about other religions. Uh, but after a while, I became uh, so tired. And just I knelt and prayed and asked God to show me the truth. And I told him, if Jesus, uh, God, if Jesus is the truth, you must guide me to the right path and save me from being misguided. And after these prayers, uh, some miracles happened to my life. Uh, I had uh, other dreams. Uh, for example, uh, one of the miracles uh, for the first time when I uh, attended in the church in Iran, um, um, I had a bad disease and uh, Jesus healed me. And also I, uh, I had an experience of... I had the experience of baptizing by Holy Spirit. Uh, in that day, it was... Um, um, powerful, the power of Holy Spirit uh, on me was so powerful, and, um, and I could see Jesus in front of me for a few seconds. Uh, he was uh, standing next to a large uh, throne, which was covering with shining gold. And at that time, suddenly all my doubts uh, disappeared, and I felt that God had removed the curtain before my eyes. And I dedicated, uh, that's why I dedicated all my life to Jesus, and that's why I tell people, you know, um, no one had forced me into anything or hypnotized me. No one uh, had teaching me about uh, Christianity. And uh, I met with Jesus and um, I learned how to live with Jesus, how to walk with him. And he was with me every day, even without going to a church. I learned how to live with Jesus and I was in love with him and because I tasted his love. And then uh, I had this passion to share this with uh, other people, with my family members, my friends, and praise God after me. 
uh, except my dad, all my family members are converted to Christianity too. Mm, fantastic. Praise the Lord. It has been also 15 years that I converted to Christianity. Um, at that time, we didn't know each other. It's just now nine years that we are friends and we know each other. I also, you know, remember when I was a young child, I had so much passion for knowing the truths about God and for having relationship with God. But as you know, I'm from Iran, an Islamic country where religious laws and regulations always stop people from knowing the truth. And it starts exactly from childhood. For example, at the schools, students were forced to read the Quran or other Islamic books or pray namaz that is in Arabic. And all I was told about Jesus in that young age was that he was only a prophet of love and peace, nothing more. But I remember I had many questions in my mind, such as what is the truth? Who is this God and how I can have a close relationship with him? You know, I believe many Iranians have these struggles and have these questions in their minds. And I remember I also had many questions about Quran and Islam, which made me very confused and frustrated. But I was so eager to find the truth, so I tried to study and do some researches on other religions on my own. I read Persian translation of the Quran and some other books of other religions. Sometimes I prayed namaz, Islamic prayer, and also I attended meetings of other religions from time to time. But none of those affairs could really help me and quench my thirst. I remember when I was 17, I was completely disappointed and I thought it would be better not to follow any religion because I was tired of the meaningless rules which were just about religious laws and I was tired of the God who was so far away and I couldn't hear his voice. It was just me talking to him, but I couldn't hear him, I couldn't touch him. So eventually I stopped doing researches completely just whenever I was alone, especially at nights. I looked up into the sky and asked God to reveal himself to me and speak to me. You know, as Bible says, seek and you will find. I also believe when we are looking for the truth and when we want to have a close relationship with God, he has many different ways to reveal himself to us and to reveal the truth to us. For me, uh, one day I've received a little booklet titled, His Name is Wonderful. It was a part of Book of Luke. And I've received it from my sister and um, she told me that she had received that booklet from a man of the church near her university. When she gave that booklet to me, she said, read it, but don't read the last page because it's a conversion prayer for those who wants to become a Christian. Although she was not a prejudiced or religious Muslim, just she had some doubts about the way that Bible introduces Jesus as the son of God. I just took the booklet from her. I went to my room and uh, I started reading the booklet. I can say, you know, from the first page, I could feel that my heart was deeply moved. I started crying because I could feel the very presence of Jesus in my room and right in front of me. And while I was reading, I felt as if I had already known and heard of all those words in the book and I just found my lost one. I believe in that uh, same day that I uh, read that little booklet, I met with Jesus Christ and I always tell people that Jesus was the person who delivered and witnessed to me the good news of salvation. Even before I had spoken to anyone about him or had gone to a church, he revealed his truth to me, but before that he had prepared my heart for accepting that. So after two or three hours being in my room, I felt that I had already known Christ and I just found my lost one. And when I got to the last page of the booklet, I prayed the written prayer and I gave my heart to Jesus without any doubt or second thought. So uh, you were both 17 when you, independently when you, be, you became Christians and, and immediately you had this passion, didn't you, to, to tell other people. I think you met at, um, it's kind of like a Bible college in, in Turkey and then you had this passion to go out and tell people. What did you do about that? Uh, yes, it was uh, 2005 that uh, we met each other in Turkey for the first time uh, for studying theology courses. And after uh, finishing the theology courses, we decided to return to Iran because uh, we both had the same passion about our country, our people, even though we knew that how much is dangerous to serve the Lord, uh, the Lord in Iran. Uh, but we, de we decided to return because um, we, we shared a little about our testimony that we tasted the love of Christ and we wanted to share this with our people. And uh, when we returned to Iran for the first uh, few months, uh, we didn't have any idea what should we do and how we can serve um, uh, our Lord here, especially as a woman. And we were uh, praying for a few months. And one day God spoke to me through a uh, Bible. Uh, I was reading Bible. He, told, uh, he showed me that uh, Iran is like a big land, that there is no seed in this land. 
And he told me, first you need plant some seed, then I will grow all these seeds by Holy Spirit. And also Mariam had a dream and we became sure that uh, we should evangelize Iranian people by distributing Bibles. Because in Iran there is just a false and distorted version of Bible which called Barnabas Bible. And in that Bible it says after Jesus Muhammad will come, and Jesus was a prophet, which is not true. And Iranian government usually sell this Bible in bookstores. And that's why we decided to put the right uh, Bible in people's hand. But at that time, we didn't have any Bible with us. And we just uh, called our pastor. Uh, uh, he was in London, the director of Elam ministry. And we asked him to send thousands of New Testaments to Iran. And it wasn't easy for them because um, they had to find an illegal way to smuggle all those New Testaments to Iran. And again, we were praying for a few months and praise God, after a few months, we could receive uh, those uh, New Testaments. And we started our first mission in Tehran, the capital of Iran. Uh, we bought a map and we put it on the wall and we started from the north of Tehran to the south. Uh, you can see the picture of the map uh, in the book and uh, usually at night we carried about 114 New Testaments in our backpack and visited one area in Tehran and put them in the mailboxes. And I remember sometimes we had to walk for long hours, about eight, nine hours in order to cover all uh, part of that area and um, nothing happened to us and praise God after almost three years we could distribute 20,000 New Testaments in all part of uh, Tehran. And every day, nothing happened to us, and every day we could see God's uh, presence with us. We could see his miracles, that how he was uh, with us, how he was protecting us. There are some stories you can read in the book that how God did many miracles to protect us. And uh, it really strengthened our faith because uh, we could see uh, his uh, p presence with us. And that's why I believe that when we trust God, when we ask God to use, uh, to use us as a tool to send his message to other people, God can do amazing and impossible things through each of us. It doesn't matter that we are alone. It doesn't matter that we are just two. It doesn't matter that we are weak. It's all about God. It's not about us. And we should just trust him and ask him to use us. And uh, after this mission, we heard from some of our friends that some official announced it in the parliament that a big Christian group started distributing Bibles in Tehran. And praise God, they didn't know it's, it's not a big Christian group, it's just two girls with two backpacks. <laughs> And praise God, even we got arrested, they didn't know about this. Um, we, we, we believe that if they had known, they would have executed us immediately. Uh, but I'm sure today they know because they read the book and maybe they are <laughs> disappointed to release us. After finishing this uh, first mission, uh, we started two house churches. One of them was among prostitutes and the other one among uh, young, pe young people in our own uh, apartment. And it's another story that how God uh, lead those people to us, especially prostitutes. And also every day uh, we were evangelizing people whenever we went for shopping, doing our chores, uh, and eating at restaurant, we were talking to people and handing them a Bible as a gift. And as you know, all these activities are uh, illegal in Iran because no one is uh, allowed to promote any religion except Islam. And that's why some prejudiced Muslims, they had found about some of our activities and they reported about us and Iranian government arrested us in 2009. So tell us about that. You, you were arrested. How, how, what happened? It was in uh, March 2009. One day in the morning, Marzi received a phone call from a stranger. He had some questions about the car document and asked her to go to the police station. I remember we were both suspicious about that phone call that she had received because it had been months that we had this strange feeling that something bad would happen. We prayed and she went to the police station. I remember I was home. Um, it was in the afternoon. I was uh, waiting for Marzia to return from the police station. And suddenly I heard the sound of her with a few others behind the door. And when I looked through the people, I saw her with uh, three guards standing there. At that moment, you know, my mind was in shock. I wanted to do something. I wanted to hide our cell phones in order to protect the names of those people who were coming to our house churches or call someone and let them know what was happening. But I couldn't do anything. I couldn't make a right decision. I just opened the door, let them in, and they entered our apartment. They ransacked everywhere. They took both of us with all our belongings, like Bibles, Jesus movies, and everything else that they had discovered in our apartment to the security police. We had to stay there for the whole first day. We had long hours of interrogation by our first interrogator. 
and he sent us to a dark and dirty cell in the basement and threatened us to physical torture. He told us that you must give us all the information about your friends, your activities as Christians, your networks, otherwise we will beat you until you vomit blood. You know, in that day, in that dark cell, we just hugged each other, we said goodbye because we thought it was our last day on earth. And we were so scared, we were pale, we, we couldn't even speak. Our mouth was so dry, we were not able to speak. And the only thing that we could do in those moments was just praying for each other. And I remember there were times that we couldn't even pray in Farsi, our own language, because we didn't know how to pray, we didn't know how to ask God to help us and give us the power. And in those moments, we would just pray in tongues and we really praise God for this gift because we could, we could feel how the Holy Spirit was leading us in our prayers and was strengthening us. We always tell people that without his presence, we couldn't stand even one day in prison because it was only God's grace, God's power and his presence with us that helped us stand that difficult condition. And then after the first day, they transferred us to another detention, um, which was a small jail um, in the basement. Again, another detention was also a horrible place. We had to sleep on freezing and filthy floor with no carpet. It was in the winter and it was so cold. And I remember when we entered that detention, we were looking for something to cover ourselves and to keep our, ourselves warm. And we could just find some wet blankets, strongly smelling of urine. We realized that the, uh, there were many prostitutes, addicted and homeless women in that detention and the guards would lock the doors um, from eight at night until morning and prisoners could not even use restrooms. That's why most of those blankets were wet, but we had to use them to keep ourselves warm. I can say for the first 14 days that we were in that first detention, we couldn't take a shower, we couldn't brush our teeth. For, for days we didn't have anything to eat or drink, we couldn't see the light and physically we were under so much pressure and we would just pray for our release because we didn't want to be in that condition. But after a while when we, when we could see God's miracles and how he was using us as a tool to give his message to other women in that detention, we became so encouraged and we realized that he had a purpose and he had a plan for putting us in that dark place. So instead of praying for our release, we started to trust his plan, we started to pray for other women in that detention and we believe we had great opportunities to share the message of salvation with most of those women in that detention. Because as we mentioned, you know, uh, more, most people in Iran, men and women, women are under so much pressure because of this government and Islamic rules. And specifically women are the group who are under so much pressure because in Islam women have no rights. And most of those women in that detention were so hopeless. They didn't have any hope for their future, for their lives. And uh, that's why we believe it was a great opportunity for us to talk to them about Jesus. I remember every day we could gather in one cell, we could uh, share the gospel with them, we could pray for them. And it was encouraging to see that most of those women were so interested in hearing about God's forgiveness in Jesus, about God's grace, God's love. Because in Islam, you don't hear these things, it's all about punishment. And we could see that some of those women, they would pray loudly, they would confess their sins, they would give their hearts to Jesus which was really a miracle and we, we believe that for the first 14 days that we were in that detention, we could share the gospel with about 70 to 80 prostitutes, addicted and homeless women. And we really praise God for this great opportunity that he gave us. <clears throat> and then I think you were transferred to Evan Prison. Tell us about your time there. Yes, after uh, 14 days being in that detention that Mariam explained, the Iranian government transferred us to Evin Prison in charges of apostasy, blasphemy, anti-government, and promoting Christianity. I can say Evin Prison is notorious in Iran uh, for arresting, raping, torturing, and executing of, uh, executing of many innocent people. Uh, when we entered the Evin prison, uh, we became uh, surprised because uh, we could see there are many political prisoners. They were respectful and intellectuals, like students, lawyers, journalists, uh, doctors, just because their beliefs was against the Iranian government uh, beliefs. And also, we could see there are many children in that prison, and it was horrible to see that little uh, children, those uh, little children in that horrible place, and they had to stay there uh, because of uh, the crimes of their mothers and the Iranian government didn't care about uh, their situation. And also there were other uh, criminals like murder, addicted, prostitutes, and all these prisoners had to live in one place. 
And uh, there is another building in Evin Prison, which is very famous. Uh, it's called 209. It's a security building. There are many solitary cells in that building, about one, two meters. And they usually send political prisoners in that building for torturing and uh, interrogation. They transferred us in that uh, building for 40 days. And um, once a week, we had a very heavy interrogation by two interrogators. And most of the time, we had to sit on a metal uh, chair, blindfolded, and answer to their questions. They tried to convince us that uh, we made the wrong decision and we should deny our faith in Jesus. Otherwise, uh, we would execute it by hanging. The only voice that we could hear in uh, that building was the sounds of other prisoners whom were uh, being beaten and tortured. And uh, it was like a mental torture for us because every day we expect them to come to our cell and take us for torturing. Also in uh, Evin prison for almost uh, eight months, we were so sick and we were suffering from uh, some physical problems. And uh, there were some doctors, uh, they refused to treat, uh, treat us. They refused to give us uh, medicine um, because they were prejudiced Muslims. They believed that if you convert from Islam to any other religion, you are infidel and dirty. Uh, another thing about um, Evin prison, which is horrible, it's execution of prisoners. Uh, we never experienced such a thing in our lives. Uh, for example, one day they came to the cell and took some uh, prisoners and put them in the uh, solitary cell. And the day after that, we would hear that they executed them. And those people were our friends. We were living with them. And it was very painful for all uh, prisoners because all the prisoners were under so much pressure and nobody could do anything. They also executed one of our best friends. She was only 28 years old. She was a uh, political prisoner and she was fighting for uh, women's rights. Uh, and they executed them and um, her executions was very painful for both of us. And I believe that it was like a sword in our hearts and still we can't forget such a horrible thing. Mm. But praise God, uh, despite all these difficulties, uh, again in Evin prison we had uh, many great opportunity to share the message of salvation uh, with many prisoners. And uh, for the first few months I remember there were some prisoners, they were um, prejudiced Muslims, they called us dirty uh, Christian. I mentioned earlier because they believe that if you convert from Islam, you're infidel and dirty. But we try to show them who Jesus is, what his teachings are by our behaviors rather than our words, by respecting them, by loving them, by praying for them and by helping them. Uh, for example, there were some prisoners, they couldn't afford themselves to buy food. They didn't have any family and we tried to help them. And every day we were praying for them. Uh, we were crying with them and because of all these behaviors and because of our prayers, they could see uh, many miracles uh, through our prayers. They could see the power of God and uh, that's why uh, there were some prisoners, they came to us and they told us that um, we can see there is a difference between our faith and your faith because every day we are praying namaz but God doesn't answer to our prayers. But when we can see that whenever you pray, God answers to your prayers immediately. And that's why they changed, uh, they changed their behaviors with us and they started to listen to us, to respect us. And also there were some guards, they came to us and they, uh, they asked us to pray for them and they apologized because of their behaviors. And it was a miracle because they could see the power of God through our prayers, they could see his miracles. And we believe that um, we were more free inside the prison to give the message of salvation to many prisoners rather than outside the prison. Because when we were free, we had to pray and ask God to lead a right person to us to talk, but inside the prison we could talk to anybody. <laughs> and one day I heard, um, I heard uh, uh, one of my interrogators talk to me and he was very angry and he told me that, uh, I heard that uh, you're talking to prisoners about Jesus. And I told him, yes, of course we talk to prisoners about Jesus because I believe that it's not uh, our faults, it's your faults because you arrested us and you put us in that prison and prisoners are curious. They ask us why you are here, what is your charge? <laughs> so we had to explain to them that why we are here. So it's not our faults, it's your fault. <laughs> and they were angry. They were angry about this, but they couldn't do anything. And that's why we believe that even though the Iranian government had tried to silence us by keeping us in that prison, but we had more opportunity to share the message of salvation <laughs> with many prisoners. And also we believe that the Evin prison and um, the detention that Mariam explained uh, became our church. Because uh, before we got arrested, we had a different view about church. 
that church is just a nice building that we can attend, we can worship God, uh, we can enjoy our, our fellowship. But later we understood that no, it's not true. Everywhere can be a church, even a dark and brutal place like Evin Prison. Hmm. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And really they were threatening you with execution and saying that, that they would release you if you would renounce your faith. How did you find the strength not to renounce your faith in that situation? Yes, um, you know, for the nine months that we were in Evin prison, we had almost 10 trials and in each of them, our judges threatened us to execution by hanging and we would hear the same thing from our interrogators in that security building that Marzi explained 209 over and over. And I, I also remember that some, some of these judges told us that if you write just one sentence that you convert from Christianity to Islam, we will release you immediately. I can say that the most important reason that we couldn't deny our faith in Jesus when we were in prison was the personal relationship that we had with him. We just shared our testimonies with you, how we converted to Christianity, how we met with Jesus how we uh, tasted his love and we had seen many miracles in our lives. We believe we are not just followers of religious rules and we hadn't just converted to a Christian religion. We are both in love with Jesus because we tasted his love and that was the reason that we gave her, our hearts to Jesus. And that was the reason that when we were in prison, we couldn't deny him. Um, you know, when we talk to people, when we evangelize people, we always try to encourage them to experience having relationship with the person of Jesus Christ, not just follow some religious rules. Because in our lives, when we face difficulties, when persecution come to our lives, um, the only thing that can really help us to stand on our faith is the, is the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ, not just following some, some religions or some religious rules. And also, if you read the Bible, Jesus himself in the Bible says, if you wish to follow me, you must pick up your own cross and follow me every day. As followers of Jesus, it was very important for us to pass through this test with victory. And today we give all the glory to God because as I mentioned earlier, without his presence, without his power, we couldn't stand even one day in prison. And he was the one who gave us this victory. He was the, he was the one who gave us this power to pass through this test. And also we believe it was really an honor for both of us to suffer for our faith uh, in prison because the sufferings that we had to endure during those nine months in prison in comparison with what Jesus did on the cross for our sins was really nothing. <laughs> and after 259 days they released you. Why, why do you think they released you? Uh, for the first uh, few months that uh, we were in Evin prison, uh, we, uh, we didn't have any connection with the world outside and we thought that we completely forgotten because we were not allowed to call our families. But after a few months when we called our sisters, we heard that many Christians from uh, different parts of the world are supporting us either by praying and sending letters to prison, which was so encouraging for both of us by hearing that and we understood that we are not alone. Instead, we have a big Christian family that they are supporting us and they are standing uh, with us in, that, uh, in this, uh, that battle. And uh, we believe that the most important reason that uh, we are free today, we, be, we got released, uh, it's because of God's grace and his power. But the second reason we believe that it's because of Christian support. For example, when we were in that prison, uh, we heard from some guards that every day we were receiving many letters and they told us that every day you're receiving about 50 letters and your letters are more than our official letters. And they were angry about this, but they couldn't do anything. They could see that there is a unity among Christians and we are not alone. And that's why they had to change their behavior with us. Even though we couldn't read those letters because they didn't give us uh, any of those letters to read, uh, but we heard from some of uh, those guards that some judges forced them to uh, open those letters, to read uh, those letters, uh, to check what people uh, has written for us. And some of them became curious about Jesus and they came to us and asked some question about Jesus. And for example, they ask, what does it mean? Jesus is shepherd. And we, we try to explain to them. And um, we understood that even though we couldn't uh, read those letters, but God used those letters to send his message to the guards, to the judges. And we really praise God for this. Also, Iranian government were under so much pressure from some international and influential organizations, such as United Nations, Amnesty International, 
and also there, uh, there were other organizations that they covered our news, like Elon Ministry, like Open Doors. And also we heard that even Pope from uh, Vatican sent a letter to Iranian government and asked for our release. And because of all these pressures, the Iranian government had to release us, unlike their desires. Because of the politics, they wanted to show that there is religious freedom in Iran, which is not true. And as you know, still there are many Christians who are in that prison and suffering for their faith. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> So since your release, what have you been doing? Um, we wrote a book about our prison experiences, this Captive in Iran. Captive in Iran. Yes. Uh, no, we, we, we ordered, we thought lots of copies of this, but we sold out of it in the f very first service this morning. Every single copy went, and there were queues all the way up the staircase trying to get hold of it. How can someone here who wants to get hold of this get I hold believe, of it? I believe you, you can find it everywhere online. Um, you can go to captiveiniran.com's website. Open Doors website and like Amazon, Bars and Nobles, everywhere the book is available online. And also we are students now, we are full-time students, we are studying international law in order to be advocates for our people in Iran. And um, And also we are working on our second book, which will be just about women in Islam, specifically women in Iran. We, we would like to show how these Islamic rules destroy the lives of women. Mm, amazing. Uh, and and you, you have a vision, don't you, to see Iran change. Just say what, what that vision is. Yes, uh, even though we don't live in our country now, but uh, Iran is our country, our home, and uh, we, uh, we pray that one day our country became a free country and people live in freedom. Uh, and uh, students, there are many students who are in the jail instead of being in universities, and uh, we, uh, women uh, doesn't have equal uh, rights with men. And uh, we pray that one day, uh, students being in the universities in, instead of being in the jail, and women have uh, equal rights uh, with men. We would have a, a righteousness government, but uh, the main, our prayer, our prayer is that to one day to see the kingdom of God in our country and people can worship uh, Jesus in, um, in uh, freedom without any fear. Mm. So we, we are very blessed to live in a country where we can worship Jesus, but we're really challenged and inspired by your boldness. What's your message to us as a church here in, in the West? You know, I remember after nine months that we got released, um, the day that we were leaving Evin prison, we were so happy. We praised God for the victory that he gave us. But on the other hand, we were not happy because we had to leave our friends behind. And we knew that still there were many innocent women in that dark place suffering only because of this government, because of these Islamic rules. And we believe today part of our hearts are still in uh, Evin prison with those people. <coughs> That's why when we left Evin prison, we promised ourselves and we promised most of those women to be a voice for them and to share their stories with the world. Because as we mentioned earlier, we believe that God had a purpose and had a plan for putting us in that dark place. We had seen many injustices uh, in Evin prison. And that's why today we both feel responsible because we believe that God had put, a, put this burden on our hearts. And we feel responsible for our people in Iran, for those people who do not have any voice. Today we are living in America, a free country, like most of you who are living in a free country, England. And, you know, we, we always encourage people not to take their freedom for granted because we believe that the freedom that we have in these free countries is really a blessing and valuable gift from God. And we must appreciate this freedom. Also, we should use this freedom in order to show our support for our brothers and sisters in those uh, um, countries that people are under persecution. Uh, it's not just Iran, our country. There are many Islamic countries like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Syria, Iraq, every day. We read the news about, you know, uh, persecution and what is happening to Christians. We believe that we need to stand with those people and we need to show our support for them. There are many ways that we can help them. We always encourage people to pray. We know that most of you here were praying for us when we were in prison. And it's really a blessing and pleasure to be able to see uh, your faces and to thank you in person. Because, you know, when we were in prison, we could feel the power of prayers. 
there is power in our prayer because we pray in Jesus' name. That's why we would like to encourage you to pray and not only for prisoners, but also for their families because sometimes it's even more difficult for the families outside when they have someone in prison. And also there are many practical ways that we can get involved, we can show our support by writing letters and sending them to prison. Marzi uh, just mentioned about the letters, how those letters made a huge difference for us. You never know who opens those letters. You may be an encouragement to your brothers and sisters in Christ, or you may send a message of salvation to someone in prison, like guards or judges. So we would like to encourage you to just pick one name, pick one prisoner, and start writing letters and sending them to prison. You can sign petitions, you can talk to your governments, politicians, and ask them to put pressure on governments like Iran. Because we know about our government, they are so scared of publicity, they care about public opinion, and we believe that this kind of support and, um, you know, um, th this kind of help can make a huge difference for those people. Don't think that you're just one person. If you pray, if you write one letter, it cannot make a huge difference. We know this and we can promise you that, you know, these small things can make a huge difference for those people. And in fact, you can save lives of those people who are in uh, different prisons. And the easiest way, you know, I believe that we can help those people is sharing this message with your friends, with your family members. We pray that, you know, when you leave this building today, Holy Spirit really leads you how, to, how you can support, how you can get involved uh, for those people and for showing uh, your support for them. We believe it's not our responsibility to tell you how to get involved, but we feel this responsibility to encourage you. Please get involved. Please support your brothers and sisters. We, because we believe if you are part of this body, if you are true believers, we need to show our support and we need to feel responsible for them. Because as Bible says, we are all parts of one body. If one part suffer, every part should suffer with it. God mm. bless you. Mm. Mm. One, um, one fi final question. Um, all of us have our, our fears that, that we face, but, but I doubt anybody here has had to face the fear of being executed right away and the kind of th threats that you were under. How, how, how do you cope with those kind of fears? How do you overcome your fears in that situation? Uh, you know, usually uh, people come uh, to us and uh, tell us that you are uh, courageous, you are a hero, but we believe that uh, we are just two ordinary women and without uh, God's power, uh, we couldn't endure even one day in that prison. Mariam explained that the first day that we got arrested, we were so scared, we were pale, we couldn't talk. And um, sometimes I remember I uh, felt physically, I felt that how much uh, I was scared, but uh, I could see that the, ma the words that come uh, out of my mouth was uh, different. It, uh, it was power in my uh, words. And I believe that it, it was because of uh, God's power and the Holy Spirit really strengthened us during uh, that time. As uh, Jesus in Bible says that uh, when you're arrested, when you are in prison, don't worry about uh, what to say because uh, Holy Spirit will give you the words. And we really exp experienced this in uh, in the prison and uh, physically I mentioned that we both uh, uh, were so scared but we believe that uh, the only thing that could help us uh, it was Holy Spirit and our prayers, our faiths, uh, our relationship with Jesus that Mariam explained about this. Mm. Mariam and Mazia, thank you so much. <laughs>